welcome back. It's Christina again with The Artist Pod, and today we'll be talking about how to draw a skink. I actually have them all over in my yard, and so I thought it'd be cool to draw one. As always, I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro tablet, and I'm drawing straight into Photoshop. So let's get arting. All right, so um, here is the skink. Um, it's specifically a common five-line skink. So, you know, they have these kind of uh, lighter color stripes mixing in with this kind of dark brown. Uh, it's dark enough it almost appears black. I've made it a brown to pull from. We'll see how that goes. I've chosen a brown that's in the same range as the gray that I use when I'm drawing black. I don't like drawing black, so I'm hoping to use this sparingly. Because it's a lizard, I'm going to see about um, how much we can fill in with highlights instead. That would be ideal. But um, we're going to start with the stripes because that's going to be the easiest thing. The stripes kind of come down and then they transfer into blue, so the tail is nice, like this nice vibrant blue. Um, so I'm also going to go ahead and decide the light source angle because the stripes are so thin, like I, there's no real need for me to sketch it out. Like This is clearly the line we're going to be following, so there's no need for me to sort that out. Um, and because of that, I'm going to have it above and just to the right. Um, so mostly above, just a little off-center, not behind or next to, that would create a different kind of shadow. Um, this way it should be mostly on top, and, and we'll have a little bit of shadowing on this back side. Well, and, and honestly, all edges are in shadow, so. Um, but that means, for instance, right, this stripe's going to be full pin pressure as we bring it down. And then we're going to have to fade that because of the way the body turns. Right, we're coming to this edge as we come down. So we're going to start fading out right around here. So it is on the edge, but faded. And then these guys. It'll look white, so, you know, I've often talked about this um, in other videos too, but colors will, you know, the brightness of a color sometimes is dependent on the colors around it. So if I want something to look black, you know, uh, it helps to have bright colors surrounding it, as opposed to just surrounding a gray with gray, it'll look gray. Um, so right now, this color kind of looks like a white, at least to me. But when we add the highlights in the white, that'll help dull it down just that little bit. Um, and because it's so bright, hopefully it'll make the dark brown uh, appear even darker. All right, so we're bringing this all the way down. And then it's going to transition to blue, but I'm going to give it kind of a little bit of a runway to do that. Now. You know, I'm a big fan of like checking to see exactly how it's looking, so there we go. A couple of nice stripes so far. I'm probably going to have to fix these edges, but um, it's not horrible, just not perfect. It doesn't have to be, right? You can see the wobble as I've drawn it. Okay. And then on this side, same thing. But the light source is on the other side, so while I'm giving this a burst, I'm mindful of the fact at points like right through here might be in shadow because of how the body is angled and coming back into highlight as it angles back up. So that's just a matter of lowering my pin pressure. Um, right through here, I'm lowering it. You can kind of see how that's a slightly off color there. And then coming back to um, full pin pressure in here. And keeping that full pin pressure at least for now, although I faded it just a little. Okay, um, now he's got some stripes here. This I'm going to do in shadow. 
which is again just that light pen pressure, not putting a ton. And then on this side, same thing in shadow. And where else? Some stripes pop up right through here. This is probably shadow. Helps because it comes to that edge, rides the edge for a little bit, which will help us define his little tummy. Okay, so that's what we have so far. So without the sketch layer in place, I'm going to come back in here and clean this up. It doesn't have to be, again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I don't want any weird, like, jagged spots anywhere, necessarily. Right, you can, like, it doesn't, I don't want it to look spiky. That's, you know, that's not how they look. <laughs> Doesn't have to do much, right? This is pretty straightforward, it's just the lines. This is the easy part. So you're just sort of connecting those lines in so there's not a jagged edge poking somewhere where it shouldn't. I think this is where, not yet, it looked like I backed off my pin pressure, but I didn't, or at least I shouldn't have, but I might have on accident. <laughs> right, getting it into here, and then backing off that pin pressure. Allowing that to fade. And the same thing on this middle one, and then we'll get to the others. It doesn't take long, you know, especially since we've already drawn it. I'm just cleaning up the lines. Kind of cute lizards when I see them scurrying around. Um, they're also really good to have around. So when you see, you know, these little guys around your house, it means they're eating ticks and other bad things. So I love seeing them, and they're everywhere here. Okay, so this is my runway to the next color. So this is faded pin pressure right through here. So just backing that off and then coming back into full pin pressure. there and then just cleaning up you know these little guys again backed off pin pressure doesn't take much on the ones that you haven't put a lot of pin pressure on uh, except when you completely draw somewhere else Okay, so first part's complete. 
Now we're gonna get that blue of the tail. So right, it just kind of becomes blue. And you end up with kind of black stripes instead. This is still full pin pressure because this is still definitively highlight. We're going to be coming to some sections that are not, but right now, right as we come over, this won't be, but now it is. Um, all edges are in shadow, so as we bring this over to the edge, this is shadow on both sides. I'm kind of doing all that in shadow right now. That's kind of how it's looking. Right, whole tail in blue. I'm just going to do light pin pressure to add shadow because now it will be a little bit more important but as soon as I'm done doing that we'll add the highlight in still relatively straightforward it's not a big area we're working with for the tail but it's definitely not as small as those stripes earlier so the tails don't end at a perfect point there's a little bit of roundedness at the end Again, just this light pin pressure because that'll give me more control over how I add in the highlights on the tail. Won't be much, it'll be just kind of a strip, but I like having the extra control. You can kind of see based on the sketch, <laughs> this drawing angle is a hard one for me. <laughs> That's why my sketch goes wonky right there. I'm trying to find a good, good angle to get this. I often turn my body in very strange positions <laughs> in order to draw. It's all just muscle memory. It's just a matter of, you know, I haven't learned taught my muscles how to draw on certain angles, so I have to twist to where I'm comfortable. Alrighty, so there's our tail. Looking gloriously messy. I'm going to fix these edges up. Just like we did with the um, stripes, right? Nothing big. Just enough. There's nothing really out of place. Especially because this is the shadow, so this isn't a sketch layer any longer. Okay. So now for the highlight, if it's above and to the right, my color is going to be off center just a bit. I don't have to put full pin pressure for this. Um, oh, when all edges are in shadow, you'll notice I'm not coming all the way to the edge over here. But I don't have to put full pin pressure because I've already shattered it, so I have some leeway here as I bring this down. Also keeping in mind as I bring it down, right, the tail's twisting, which means the way the highlight is would be shifting and changing too.
see right through here, it's more on top as opposed to the left or right. Sort of working it in. Whereas here, there's going to be a little bit of a gap, right? And it's going to be more centered as it makes the transition from one side to a different side. I don't want that to be jarring, so making sure it's shaded in nicely, or feathered in nicely, I should say. I don't want a jarring transition from highlight to shadow. It won't look real. Well, that's looking lizard-like. No. So the rest of this guy. I'm going to do is light pin pressure. and being careful of my strokes. So I don't want too many. As we discussed with the tail, right, more strokes means highlight as well as pin pressure. So the more um, I add in, the brighter it'll be. And I want it to look relatively dark. Oh, I missed a, I think I missed a stripe there. That actually isn't doing horribly. And the details on the hands. Before it twists up right to the arm there. It's got all those interesting little fingers. And all this is um, light pin pressure still for this brown all the way down. I may be able to add in some highlighting um, and you know I'll be adding in certainly um, some white to highlight it as well like it's it's reflective um, kind of mentioned how um, you know, lizard, like frog, or like things like that, it's going to have this sort of reflective quality to it because it's potentially wet and it's digging around in wet soil, and so you're just going to have a brighter sort of reflection on it. And we're almost to the feet after I get this little stripe in. And see how it's looking. Oh yeah, you can see him. Although he looks a little funny without his back feet. <laughs> All right. And then I need to add in. I missed the stripe of the the light colored, sort of cream colored stripe. Uh, I missed one by his front right leg. So I need to fill that in. Okay. Cute little lizard. Just gonna go in and 
fill in any awkward gaps. Just kind of like what we did right with the stripes, just making sure all of it makes sense and it works. Those feet are looking a little sloppy, but we'll fix that too. Right, so you can see on this edge, I don't want that like gap. There needs to be something that connects it in. So anytime I have a situation like that, I want to make sure that the edges are all smooth, but also, you know, filling in this just a bit more. And then I can decide if I want to add any highlights with the brown. Be nice too, but just like with black, it can be tricky to do it without making it look like it's brown and not black. <laughs> or I, in this case, it is brown, but um, making it look like it's, uh, I want it to make, to look like a dark brown, not a light brown. And in all honesty, it's the color I've chosen is kind of a medium brown. So I just need to be careful on how I do that. I'm going to fix the stripe real fast. Um, yeah. Okay. And then back to the brown. So now I need to fix um, the feet. Because they are looking rough. Just making sure the fingers um, look reasonable and like actual digits instead of crazy little lines coming up. And you know, lizard and frogs and those sorts of animals, their fingers look weird anyway, but there's also certainly, you know, it can still look right or wrong. Sometimes um, you know, I'll have trouble getting something aligned if I'm too far out. So if you ever have trouble like that, you can zoom in typically and fix how you're setting your lines up. myself a little closer to my image. I can see more what I'm doing and what's going wrong. Be more precise over where I'm putting something. And then the last foot. Uh, and I am going to do some highlighting. I'm already kind of accidentally doing it with the, the fingers of the lizard anyway, so it'll I'll just add it in. It'll make the composition look better. Um, I'm still holding back my pin pressure, even when I'm accidentally adding the highlights. It's a case where I'm adding too many lines. I'm trying to fix, um, you know, the fingers and make them look nice and uh, clean instead of sharp, jagged sticks. And inevitably. Okay, now, do a little bit of highlighting. Again, I've already done it a little bit. And I'm just adding more lines, not adding more pin pressure. And 
and you can see just by doing that how much it's brightening it up. All the way over, certainly to this other line, but being mindful that over here we start getting into shadow. little bit on this guy, but have it fade pretty quickly. Okay, well that really shows him up nicely. Yeah. I'm glad the brown doesn't make it look too awkward. Okay, now for the, the arms, same thing. And you have a point at which you're going to have highlight and then it'll go into shadow on that back side the hands will have it make sure every digit has it less so on this side but I am going to give a little burst to its elbow and once again this side all the fingers. And then just like that other side, we're going to give a little bit to his knee, right? It's just like we did here, right? There's a gap where the body would be casting a shadow. So you have a gap before kicking into some highlight. His toes back here actually might be picking up some highlight too, as opposed to in the front where his body would probably be blocking. Maybe not the front line. There we go. Now we're going to add a little bit of white, as I mentioned. Light source coming from above and to the right, so that's where the highlight would be. Mm. to distinctly look like a highlight. He's wet, right? We have that light coming down, following him down where it would hit and fade over. down the blue too. And you get this nice burst of white coming through.
and then just fading it on the edges. And then on the arms. Especially on the ones on the side of the light source. here. Although again, just like this one, right? Like it, because of how his foot's turned, probably would be catching some light. So this kind of helps indicate something's wet, right? Like that's how you can kind of show it. He's wetter, he picks up more light. And so we get kind of a bigger burst of, uh, of highlight. bit on the nose. Mm. Better than what I just did. I'm sure that white's standing out. Which, yeah, I think it's probably pretty good. go. A little, uh, a little skink. All right, so that is how you draw a skink. I hope that was helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done. I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.